will I will officially start recording. So thank you so much for joining today. We are having a very amazing speaker, Laura, and uh, today she is going to uh, share her SEO journey, her SEO story, so we can all, all benefit and uh, get value. So welcome to SEO Happy Hour. I'm Adriana Voyadin. I'm SEO manager and coach for SEO professionals. And um, today I took uh, just kind of like mojito from the from the store. But yeah, welcome to SEO Happy Hour and um, Happy Friday, everyone. So Laura, thank you so much for joining and um, we are so, uh, we are uh, uh, really want excited and we really want to hear about you, your story and uh, what, what brings you to SEO world. Um, thank you, thank you for having me and it was nice to speak to you before and I'm excited to I had the chance to think a bit more about, I think, the, the things that we discussed before as well. So it's nice to talk about it as well. Um, so just to give you a bit more context. So I'm Laura. Um, I work at uh, Verve, uh, Verve Search and I live in London. So I've been working and living in London for six years now. So I moved here uh, after uni. And I lived actually in five different countries before. So I've had a chance to work with loads of different people. But then when I moved to London, I have really experienced diversity and, you know, different people and experiences as well, because it's such a big city. And that's why I love it so much. So I've been mm -hmm. here for six years now. And I think now it's really my home. Um, and... Yes, yeah, so I've started working at Versace actually six years ago, and that will be one thing I will talk about after. Um, and I started as an outreach executive, so I was doing digital PR, so reaching out to journalists to get links back to, uh, you know, uh, our clients' website. So it was very fun, and we used to create like, and we create still today some really fun campaigns for our clients. And so I was really attracted by the fact that it was very creative job while still being something very uh, performance based. And I've always kind of liked the creative side of, of this, uh, of this job. Um, and I was also, when I moved to London, I was also, I didn't know anyone. So I also wanted to meet people. And uh, I think I found there like a very good, nice group of people that really took me in. And uh, we were lots of young people. So it was very, um, it was a very social environment as well. So it really allowed me to grow, um, get to know my colleagues as well, um, and also join at a moment of big growth. So uh, actually we were loads of very young people working together. So it was very creative and it was a like, very good environment to start, I think, my career. And it really motivated me to learn and, le and know lots of things. Like, and, just teach myself loads of things, but also work with different people to discover new things. Um, and as well, it was a moment where digital PR wasn't so big. Uh, I think Verve was probably one of the only agency who was offering it back in the day. So um, we were just really, you know, trying things out and discovering what was working, working with journalists with different creators just to make sure that whatever we did served our you know our clients purposes um and very quickly I really like realized I really enjoyed the work and I had you know really supportive managers and so I started to get really into the organization and trying to realize what I wanted to do within the agency um, and what I always liked is working with people so more than a SEO technical SEO person, I'm more like a people, but like I, I love working with people. Uh, I'm, um, which can, it doesn't have to be one or the other, by the way. Uh, but it's uh, it's one of those that was always what I'm interested in, like sort of people management, growth, and then all the creative part, like working with the journalists, the relationship with them, growing that, and making sure that we are having like proper strategy for this um so within um a few after a couple of years there I got promoted to team lead uh, and I took over some uh management um uh of responsibility um and that was very fun because 
I felt very trusted to, you know, get on with it. Um, even though there was the moment where I, I went from, uh, well, just, you know, doing what I was told and coming up with new ideas to just having to tell people, direct people more. And so that was also a moment of a lot of questioning for myself or like, am I the right person to say to these people, you need to what do else? this? What else? What <laughs> else? Yeah, I know, right? It's just one of those that everyone experiences when you go from non-managerial to managerial position, basically, especially if you're quite a young person. I think it's always this, your first experience in management can always be a bit wondering, but I think everyone was always very good. And I think there's only, you can have some of these doubts, but at, at some point, like if you express them and you also make sure that you get people's opinions, you can always actually go um go through it and also just try and find ways to work with people um my my i've always found it easier to have like not that much of a of a relationship as a manager manager but just a, like com like just normal communication of like really encouraging people to come to me with what they what they want and same i will always ask for feedback uh, so what do you think how are you feeling asking a lot like to people like how it's going um that's something I'll talk about in a second as well and um yeah so that was a fun moment and we were loads of uh, and we were a big team and then uh, there was COVID <laughs> for the rest time as well uh, and it was a big change in the agency that got acquired um so uh, when that changed there was a lot of change in management and from that as well, there was an opportunity for me to become a director. And um, when that happened, it was once again a bit of a scary moment because it was a bit from one to the other. I didn't have much time to prepare myself for it, um, even though I really wanted to. Um, and so... How, you, how do you think you would prepare for it? That's the thing. I don't know. Now that I'm <laughs> running, you know, you never know. There is never enough, like... You'd think, oh, I would have liked to know more about, you know, managing this or how to measure this or performance things. I like, you know, or like maybe I should, how do you prepare for, to explain to the clients this? Like, should I actually have more insight? Do I need to know more? And I think this is always this kind of belief that you need to know everything to get to the top. But actually, no, you need to just know how to navigate it better. Uh, and I think that with COVID, it definitely taught me this, like without me realizing that, you know, you you have actually shown leadership by, you know, coming up with solution in difficult times. And um, so actually this is the, but that is the hindsight, right? When that happens to you, you're like, oh my God, am I ready for this? And, and all this. And yeah, it was, but it went really well. And um, the agency started a bit from zero from that as well because of the like the, uh, having been acquired. Um, and yeah, so we rebuilt the agency. That's when I started working with Olga, who was here as well, more closely. Nice. Um, and uh, we had a really good, like we, have, we had a really good relationship in senior leader, leadership team as well. So that helped to, you know, bring people with us is because that was also the worries when you become, you come to top is that are people actually going to be happy to follow and are I going to want to get involved as well? Um, How do I motivate people to show my vision to say, like, I think you have your place here. And, and so there was a lot of rebuilding this kind of culture and vision to make sure that actually people really wanted to get on board and work with us on this one. Uh, especially after all these kind of ups and downs for COVID and people having their own struggles as well at home sometimes. Um, but uh, we, and then also on the, on the other hand, we had to manage uh, entering a new ways of working with new a new group. So um, that was like a time of like a lot of restructuring and a lot of asking ourselves, are we doing the right thing, going back and forth? Um, and I actually really enjoyed that bit, even though, it was a bit unsettling and every time we were just changing our we were changing opinions, I actually thought it was one of the moments where I've learned the most in my career because it's just really um really different, I'd say, uh, from what I've seen before, where there was always a lot of stability 
Um, and it was hard to get back to this, even though I don't think when you work in an agency, stability is ever a word you'll know, because it's just always like ups and downs, new clients, new challenges, new wins, new loss. It's just always like change. And I find it like, actually, it's, it's quite un like understanding when you think about it. Um, but so when you're in the midst of, of it, it's also a bit like, Wow. And hi, yeah. And I really would like to uh, ask you, like, how does it feel on daily basis? You mentioned a lot of challenges, like growing, drops, but uh, how actually your day looks like when you are in the middle of this thing? Um, it's a lot of riot. Prior, oh, I can't say that, but priority, like priority, mm -hmm. and helping people to prioritize because. The agency life is priorities constantly. Everyone is a priority. So which one is more of, like, I think it's just trying to find the balance between being able to service everything, put the people in the right place so that all your clients are happy. Uh, and I think this is actually almost like, a, well, this is my full-time job, basically, is making sure everyone is at the right place at the right time so that um actually the wheels is, is running. Um, mm -hmm. and so it's just a, a lot of checking in, a lot of communication with people. Um, actually, sometimes I can spend uh, like five or six hours in meeting, sometimes back to back. Um, even though I always take an hour for lunch, this is like my non-negotiable thing. Um, that's my the French in me. Just I just don't want. I uh, I just need my lunch break. Um, and yeah, so I always like take the time to at least have a little break, but. It's just a lot of talking all day. I talk and say, you need to do this. How can I help you to do that? Uh, checking in and hopefully, like at the end of the day, I actually feel like sometimes I'm like, oh, I haven't done anything today. But actually when I look back and all those mini meetings, I'm like, no, 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 actually this person managed to do this because we had this conversation. And from that, actually, you realize the impact of people management uh, overall. Yeah. And when you when you have that thought, oh, I didn't do much today, how that feels for you? I just, um, you know, it feels like more that like sometimes I'm like, how do I do something that I can actually measure? Um, but um, yeah, it, it feels like um, uh, because I always have projects, obviously, that I need to work on on the sides, and this this take time as well. Um, and I think one thing that I'm still working on is how do you block this time to make sure that you can work on those that are your achievement, your personal achievements that you can show for. Can you like you show to your team, your managers? Um, and also how do you then keep also the time to be able to support all these people around you? Whether or not you're a manager, I think it's really important to still being involved in all the this like chats in the agency supporting I don't know if there is a difficult situation or a like challenging uh, um, story campaign like how do we go like how do we make it work I think whether or not you're a manager you need to get involved in those because that actually you learn so much from it um, yeah. yeah sometimes it can feel like physically I haven't achieved anything that I actually know and do you think you you mentioned that actually your checking is uh... Is a client happy? Is your team happy? Uh, uh, have ev everything been in the place? But do you think you are um, acknowledging your feelings and thoughts of, of, that, of that day uh, enough? Yeah, I think that's a good question. Um, I think sometimes yes and quite often no um, is the answer. Um, and it's one of my traits is that I have a lot of empathy. So I spend a lot of time to to make sure that everyone is okay to sometimes my own detriment. And I've been very guilty of that often. Um, luckily, I work, and I'm not just saying that because Olga is here, because that's the proof. I do work with people who genuinely check in from top to bottom. So even my team, sometimes they do say like, I can see that you're busy today. You know what? Just leave it with me and I'll do it. Um, and I really appreciate this. Like, I think it's really important that, you know, you did like, I, I think I'm be I'm also getting better at saying to people, today I'm a bit overwhelmed. I'll, I'll do it tomorrow. 
unless obviously, you know, there's the biggest deadline in the history of the agency, you you, you can do it tomorrow. Uh, you know, it's just one of those like, um, I, I, it's just that you have to train yourself to say and to also be okay with your team telling you some days like, oh my God, today, listen, I've got four projects on, I just can't do it. Um, I'm too, it's too much for me. And if you also, the fact that I feel I've done that, I think if people feel more comfortable doing it with me as well, and it's, then I can understand people's limits and how much they can take on and how much is too much. Um, and you just go from this. Um, but yeah, this the, the, the communication on feeling overwhelmed, sometimes you feel like you can't do it when you're the manager because you're like, oh no, I, I can't because I need everyone to feel like I'm so strong and I can get over it. But actually sometimes you just are a bit overwhelmed. Yeah. Right. And Olga is sending your heart as a support. But you know what was interesting here to see? Uh, you mentioned that you have empathy, like, and then uh, you you started to talk about everyone else. And when I ask you, like, do you acknowledge yourself, like your um, thoughts and feelings? Again, you were started to like talk about and everyone else, but you didn't talk about yourself. Yeah. If you are having the empathy for all others, like, is it possible to actually, the, and I'm, I'm not talking about you, like it's it's across the all SES professionals. They are having the empathy, but they are not having empathy for themselves. Mm -hmm. yeah. So let's let's bring awareness to this. If, if you are tired, if you are stressed, if you are overwhelmed, Mm -hmm. let's acknowledge to yourself and see like no nobody needs to check or check on you like mm -hmm. check on yourself yeah because we are putting like team members managers clients doesn't matter like we are uh mm -hmm. we are putting all of them as a priority to feel good instead of us because if we are not feeling good like we are not going to do a good job mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, I've worked with people um who weren't like in the best place when they were working with me, and you can really feel it because you especially when you're someone who's quite emotionally aware of, of this thing, that you kind of take on a lot of their 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 pain or their stress or whatever it is that they are feeling. Um and so this is a very important that's why it's so important to, to, to talk about it and just acknowledge it for yourself and with people as well because I feel like sometimes when I say it to people I kind of put myself I like I said it so now I, I acknowledge it also for myself you know it's just like today I can't because I've got too much on well then everyone knows so now I don't have to put this pressure on myself as much anymore and um, so yeah talking about it can help and it doesn't have to be your co-worker, I know that, for example, my partner or my sister is the sort of person that I will go for um, uh, when I have like a difficult day or it's a lot. Um, I would just let it all out in the evening or something just to make sure that I have a a place where I can actually get it, like get it out of me and not necessarily have um, to just keep it in always just for yourself. Some people even journal a lot. Um, I know that I'm terrible at writing stuff I hate journaling with a passion I am the sort of person who sit down one day and I write things down and then I don't touch this for four years and then I start again but some people are really find a lot of of like uh, um well comfort in doing it and I think it's really important to know what's your way of letting go of, of stuff yeah and mm -hmm. I love that you mentioned journaling because that's always kind of like boring synonym for boring I, I don't want to uh, journal but also I would like to say that actually journaling uh, our brain is connecting with our high schools and elementary schools when we had essays and when we were writing these essays someone grade us so then we are thinking we are not good at the uh, journaling because in the past whenever we were writing something someone grade us so we got some kind of like 
the negative uh, feelings around the writing and then someone is grading us. But actually, if we are just like journaling and like we are writing whatever and nobody will see that, actually, we will not be graded. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I, I, I really would like to highlight the the power of just like it it doesn't need to be like journaling like you have your journal and then like you're journaling but just like taking a piece of paper and putting your thoughts on the paper mm -hmm. by your hand especially you can do that like in the phone notes but like it's not powerful as you can do that like in the on the paper because when you are writing your brain can only be focused on the writing and he can't like think about anything else and that brings you presence mm -hmm. and when you have that presence that decreased your anxiety and stress and right. especially when you are putting all the thoughts and the paper you are putting like the light on it mm -hmm. so when you are putting the light on it they they are starting to uh, be like weaker and weaker so mm -hmm. that is the power of like kind of like journaling writing and it's it's not like uh, anything else it's just like how our brain is yeah. uh, operating so yeah. I, I would encourage like anyone just like to just just for example just put your thoughts five sentences and you will see like immediately like the the, the power yeah. in it yeah I'm gonna try again. You know, that's a good that's a good point. Like, it's just about also doing it at the right time. You don't have to do it every day. And that's also that's the thing that a lot of people think about it. That is, if you have to do it every morning when you wake up or every night, um, and sometimes that can become then also a, a almost a chore. You have to write it down. Whereas it's better to use it when you really feel like you need it and mm -hmm. let things go. Um, I know that I love talking a lot, so. Sometimes I even just talk to myself or, you know, I, actually I never tried, but maybe I should even like recording it and then just deleting the recording. And then that's just off my chest, you know, even if it's not with someone in, in particular. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just loads, loads that you can do to make sure that everything, you know, you can, you don't get over them and you also like, the last thing everyone wants is for you to have too much on and burn yourself out. It's just, uh, I think it's uh, more and more manager obviously realizing this and there's a big emphasis on, you know, well-being. Um, but um, sometimes I think also one big thing, which I don't, I haven't even thought about really talking about, but actually is important is the comparison with other people. Oh, yeah. Um, and I think this can bring a lot of stress as well in the day to day. Um, and just about like kind of trying to take a step back on, you know, this other person from another agency that has nothing to do with me just did this. Why did I do it? Or and this kind of need to some always compare yourself because everyone posts so much. Um, yeah. And stuff on on social media. It's quite a, a tough one to also escape in the even if, especially in the professional environment. Uh, where a lot of people shout out about um their wins and whatever, whatever goes well for them, which is great. But then, yeah, sometimes you can make yourself feel a bit worse looking at it. Um, so I've had this thing that some I really st struggle to look too much on LinkedIn. Uh, so I pick my time where I'm in a good state of mind to actually look at it, and then I'm actually happy for the people that are posting stuff because you want to be right uh, there are your friends or people that you know colleagues um so it's a healthy relationship with it yeah i think linkedin uh, like <laughs> is the worst thing that happened to us because actually um all these comparison that we did like in the past between like maybe colleagues family members or like team members then we got a platform to compare ourselves to the rest of the world mm -hmm. and of course like we, we uh, in every kind of like comparison like definitely someone else will be better but mm -hmm. also here is a um uh, interesting story that uh, where that comparison is coming from and it's coming from actually the family it's coming like you know like your parents has been comparing you like to your brother sister to your colleagues to like mm -hmm. uh, like any like other team members 
then you are they are kind of like even comparing you when they are saying that actually you are similar to for example your mom your uh dad or like doesn't matter and then in the high school you constantly has been have been compared to other kids and definitely you are getting kind of like grades for it the mm-hmm. high school the same then you are comparing which college you are going to uh, to enroll you're comparing like which country you will live and then you enter the uh, the company and then you are you're being compared with all of this so uh, the human creature sees like all these comparison between uh, e- um, each other and then like yeah of course that means that I need to compare now myself when my parents stopped comparing me when my uh, um, like teachers, stop comparing me nobody's comparing me now I need to compare myself now to other and then we go to LinkedIn and we com- like we do the like worst thing that we can do is actually to compare with someone that we like just saw on the, the LinkedIn post and then like we are so basically we are making so many uh kind of like uh, uh, bad things with the comparing and like even like this comparing I- I- is not real because nobody can be compared mm-hmm. and then we are using that comparison which was like completely like fake we are leveraging that like to sabotage us like on the yeah. on the so it's it's crazy what we are doing ourselves yeah it's true it's true <laughs> it, it, it's never it's never easy to stop though because it's it's also how you make yourself known right by talking about yourself and what you do and your achievements so how we still keep this platform but what was keeping it quite healthy uh is just a, a very different it's, it's a very tough challenge and um, so yeah i hope that in the in the future we can keep keep like maybe relationships being like very like we can keep real relationships within the workspace as well because I think because we work as well very remotely and we now are connected with people all over the world it's so much easier to then to compare yourself to people who have nothing to do with you whereas at least in the workspace or in your family round it's still difficult but at least it's people that you have stuff in common with uh, whereas sometimes you compare yourself to someone uh, in the US, who does a completely different job, who has a completely different life, who come from the different background, like it's just you can't do it. Um, so I'm hoping that we can keep a level of reality in all this as well. Yeah. And what we do also, like we compare ourselves to people who want like totally different things than us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No sense at all. True. It's true. Um, and I think it's also like, and I've had that with colleagues and friends and um, sometimes you think you want something because someone else wants it and um, so you know I've had um, I've worked with people who um, you know always wanted to be managers but when you ask them why they were like mm, I don't know yeah <laughs> like, that's common thing in the industry a pay rise uh, and you're like no but there, there must be other ways like and this is why and I think that's one of the points I want to talk about is just how do you retain your talent in your company, in your in your in your team or in your agencies? Uh, is how you manage to make a space for these people to grow despite them not being the type to be a manager, uh, or um actually maybe they just also would be wasted as managers. They wouldn't enjoy it, and so they will leave. Um, or they will just make someone's. They would not be. Too, too good of a manager to someone else who then leaves so um with, I've noticed that like by kind of allowing people to find also their passion in their in the work in like in their workspace in their everyday work that you can actually first make them happy retain them as like, employees but also like encourage creativity and like new things uh in in your team and obviously you can't do that with every team but I think like it's always been something to be in a small agency that we've been able to do and having like just creating roles for people directly. And and I just always really enjoyed doing that. Um, and, and I think then you don't have to compare yourself that much because actually you can choose what you're good at and you can push it. And then, then it works 
for you and he works for everyone else. And yeah. Yeah. Even though it's but, not <laughs> Yeah, that's great call out. That's great call out because uh, I recently read some studies that's actually the majority of our wishes, like what we really want, is something that we see someone else have it. And then we got that wish, like, oh, I want that. But basically, it's it's very to oh, it's very good to highlight uh, your point that actually some 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 people are becoming managers, even they don't see themselves, but it's just kind of like the way they usually see other people around them are becoming like successful, are becoming are getting like new SEO level, mm-hmm. and. That brings me to your uh, introduction when you said like that you are really enjoying working with people, mm-hmm. even like uh, in technical things like you can do like o- also like these ones, but actually you are uh, enjoying that kind of communication with people and also you are doing like PR, you're managing people. So uh, uh, how much is actually important to see like what you are good at, like what you enjoy and then do that in your work. Yeah. yeah no Can worries. you imagine yourself just like working as a technical uh, person every day? So No, it's just one of these things. It's just like, I, I, I really struggle when I don't talk to someone all day. Like, uh, actually, I, I think I'd, sometimes I have to call people. If I have a day without meeting, I just have to find a way to communicate um, with my colleagues or with my friends. Because, you know, especially now that we work from home, uh, this is one of my, well, not all the time, luckily for me, because I will go crazy. And it's just a very interesting as well, like personality differences, because I know so many people who are so happy to work at home and to just be able to focus. Whereas actually I can't be productive just when I'm on my own all the time. I need to have this kind of people's energy um, kind of level to help me get my energy up and uh, yeah, so whenever I spend too many days on my own, I'm a bit like, ah, uh, what am I doing now? Um, whereas, um, yeah, some people completely don't need this, and you can still be a good manager even if you don't come see, like see people as often. But I think it's there's this kind of way of chatting and discussing that is quite important as well, uh, whether it's in person or remotely, that you need to continue having whatever happens. Uh, if you're a people person and um, and yeah it's just yeah it's just for me it's always really hard when I don't see people um or don't talk to them um yeah it's, I also have a big family back home so I speak to them a lot um but actually it happens um at some point that I was also getting too much you know mm-hmm. when it's like I was just, I couldn't you know what you said about like not just thinking about yourself at all when I that happened I was just like I don't know who I am without all these people anymore. Um, and it was actually COVID came out just at the right time where I then had to spend a lot of time alone or not doing anything or not having the opportunity to do much. And it really helped me figure out, you know, when I need to be surrounded, when I need to talk to people and when is actually the best time for me to focus, to do my own thing, to be creative, to... um do all the things that I need to do by myself and and this split like that is very important to have for everyone I think even the most sociable person needs to have an ex like an out and an exit and somewhere to go and um, yeah yeah that and definitely you are you are very aware of it so you know like when you need more people when you don't need the, so just like set, take some like time uh, of the people and just like to yeah. uh gather that energy and like go there so that's that that's excellent mm-hmm. um i would like to uh, uh know uh for example if we can do um uh the talk about like SEO challenges you had when you started your uh career and then uh make like what what's the similar and like what is different from the SEO challenges that you are having currently uh yeah. at your work um I've got a, I think I've got a few I think it's like yeah it's quite of my main challenges anyway I've just been the same throughout but in different forms um one is and that's one thing that I think was important to talk about today is the 
the need for uh, like the big clashing between the need to have a challenge in your life and in your work and versus the fear of failing at it. So how do you balance it out and how do you take on the right opportunities that are good for you? And, you know, it's just like, if you get something offered to you, a new job, a new position, a new responsibility, how to not be scared of it? Like, how, like, should you not be scared of it? Should, what should you do to be ready for it? And all these things are like super interesting. So when I was talking about becoming, you know, the director, it was, I really wanted this. I wanted to have that challenge. I wanted to go for it. But then I was just always asking myself, can I do it? Can I? Am I actually good enough? Am I going to fail? What if I fail? Am I going to lose my job? Am I going to be able to pay my rent? And you know, all these things where you just like scare yourself almost because no one else is scaring you. Like if someone yeah. is giving you an opportunity, it's because you you deserve it and you have like most of the time it's because you deserve it and because you uh um you've worked hard for it. Um and yeah, it's just this kind of balance to strike all the time. Um of keeping your fear down it's also always good to also have a bit of and um, like not fear but a bit of anticipation and not feeling 100 percent sure of yourself because it forces you to i think to you know double check what you're doing concentrated checking with other people like you know just making sure that you're um working hard and and work like going towards your goal and on and improving yourself um but at the same time it's just you shouldn't let your fear take over and and, and miss an opportunity from that and um, and i think that it happens to me on a yearly basis like you know whenever there's new responsibility um it would just like be the it would just be like the forever is it am i too scared or you know like i'm yeah. scared of it, but how am i like how am i supposed to you know for otherwise um so what do you do then, for example, you got a new responsibility, you are thinking that uh, maybe you're not good enough, like in these situations, like what what, what you do? Um, usually I ask someone else to ask, uh, answer the question for me. Um, I think my, my, uh, my great luck in life is I have great friends and family surrounding me. So whenever I have this doubt, I do talk about it with people. And usually they can give me a list of 10 things why I deserve this or you know they'll be like well no you worked out for it you wanted it you asked for it you've done this you've done that um and it's always good to also have like colleagues and managers also appreciate appreciate appreciating that um and explaining why you deserve it so it's really important um and yeah so usually I kind of talk it through with people and it's like oh I don't know if I'm ready I don't know if I want it I don't know if this and then usually like my partner or my sister will say, but no, but you've done this and you've done that. And um, it's it's very like you deserve this. And that's always very validating to hear someone else do it. Um, I know like I've not got too many other tips for it, but um, yeah, you could do a like pros and cons list of why, uh, why you deserve this or why you should or should not do it. Uh, usually um, the pros always outweigh, outweighs the, the cons anyway. Um, so I'd say that's yeah my way of going through this. Yeah. And for example, you, you're not feeling that you're good enough for one position and then like you're talking with your partner, your friends or like family and then like they are telling you like that how great you are, how you're deserving, yeah. like you have experience and it feels good it feels good like for a few hours but what's happening the next day when you are alone yeah i guess at some point you just also have to convince yourself right it's just um it's just you need to just also validate yourself and say no i can't do this like i'm i'm actually just good at my job i'm like i'm i've i've done this before i can do it um and just con- continuously just you know telling yourself and if you not don't know something look for it search for it i think the internet is the biggest like the biggest place uh, in the world so like you can find any any information there so if you need help on a project like it's 
it's never like impossible to find uh no one has like you're never the first person who have felt this way so you can find other people who have had the same challenges speak to them as well um people who have done the same roles as well could could help us to direct you and say what they've done when they've got into their role um and just really trying to what I do and what I like to do is I really over organize my days uh, when I'm not sure I just write down everything I need to do today and this way I just really feel like in control and I focus on the things that I have control over so I know that I can send this report I know that I can work on this client I know I can talk to that person and at the end of the day I actually feel like I've achieved more and then that kind of gives me confidence for the next day that I can then do that. And just splitting the task in smaller tasks really help to me for me to like take the confidence that I need to get on with it. Yeah. And I love this uh, key point here that you mentioned, and that is actually validating yourself. Because if you are just validating yourself, then it's more powerful than like when someone is validating you because when it comes to from you from your inner like kind of like inner inner person and um, another thing here is actually that you mentioned uh, the thing for example if we don't know how to do some tasks the interesting uh, thing here is actually we are overwhelmed by the thoughts that we are having like oh i'm not good enough i'm i'm uh, i'm not sure like how i will do this like i'm not sure like um will i be able to finish this like they will know i will be fired like they will know how much i don't know so we are more thinking about these things and it takes more time than just like go to google and googling mm -hmm. because when you go when you go and actually do the the actual task it's mm -hmm pressure is down because like you put like hands like let's work on it but like these thoughts that you are not good enough is actually what is sabotaging you on the everyday basis mm -hmm. also i want to explain like why it, this is happening uh and it will happen because if we didn't do anything about our mindset, ab about uh, our brain patterns, it will just like keep repeating. So mm -hmm. basically these uh, feelings and thoughts that you are not good enough happen mm -hmm. when you started the SEO job, happen when you got a promotion for director, happen when you are getting like new tasks or new responsibility. Because we always think that we will actually uh, resolve this by learning more by learning new things, but it's not uh, how it will actually solve the problem. We just need to change that brain pattern, thinking that we are not good enough. Mm -hmm. And when we are doing that on the small tasks, on the small responsibilities, on the like monthly reports, then when we are getting a promotion, when we are getting like upper level of seniorities, we trained our brain to think that we are good enough. So it's not about new SEO skills. It's not about new knowledge. It's about your mindset mm -hmm. pattern that actually, of course, that you are good enough for today. And if someone offered director position for you, that basically they, they know that like you are good for director. Mm -hmm. But actually like what keeps us to in all these bad feelings uh, are actually ourselves that we didn't train our brain to think properly in this situation. And sometimes in the future, like we can also um, be self-destructive when we are getting like new opportunities because our body is just like, no, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. So th th that's the thing that I really want to like bring awareness. When you are having like these self-doubts, imposter syndrome, you don't need to learn more. You just need to stop and then working on your brain patterns because definitely uh, it's okay to feel that you want to learn more, you want to achieve big goals, and you will. But from the place that you are good enough for today, for today's position, tomorrow you will get like more knowledge, but you are feeling enough for um, for today. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's the huge difference that makes difference to actually be able to take like the next steps like bigger positions because uh sometimes 
uh, bigger positions can actually sabotage you if you didn't like fix uh, all these like background uh, mm-hmm. patterns in your brain when you have like hundreds of employees like being mm-hmm. like uh, any kind of like man in, in the not kind of man like uh, person in the charge mm-hmm. of the all things if you really want to achieve big things and like without stress and being like anxious then you really mm-hmm. need to like fix all these brain brain patterns from the past yeah absolutely and it's also so it's a working process so no one is expected to do that like one day to the other your confidence like it's just comes yeah. time and experience as well and sometimes that's also what you need to get to the next step in your career as well you need to have had these experiences and some people also stay at the same level for a while just because they need to grow this kind of attitude experience part before they can actually because they have the skills they just need to grow the confidence and before they can actually take on more and um it's really important to listen to yourself when you do these things because um and and just push and and push to to get new opportunities but also like you know make sure that you're ready when you do it as well it's it's important like it's it's that's what the balance is i think as well it's like having enough time to prepare for it as well is important yeah and how we will prepare for it now? <laughs> oh, you know, who knows? Uh, yeah. It's, By small uh, steps. Yeah. Experiences. Like you have to like have loads of different um, different opportunities, uh, not different opportunities, but scenarios. Like, you know, if you're in an agency, like working on different clients, different projects helps you build up this confidence that you actually can go up there so sometimes you if you work on just one client and you expect to grow from that well then maybe it's just not enough as well for you to come and bring enough with you whereas if you've worked on a couple of few different projects and you've got learning from them I think it's really important to acknowledge ne- learnings after each projects as well because then you collect stuff that you've learned and that gives you also that confidence to say well I have done this so I know I can actually go to the next level yeah I love that yeah what you actually just said like it's it's actually because in that way you are validating like yourself because you have learned so much and I I think like we are not validating ourselves at all and any projects like as you mentioned like different niche different projects like every project brings you a new knowledge but also Mm -hmm. new kind of like skill set that you have gain or you have discovered that you are lacking so you need to learn but Mm -hmm. in um, both ways you are actually a winner because you know like you learned and you got like what else you need to learn yeah and it's important as a manager to encourage your team to do that as well like um so if you have like uh, if you're the head of a team or an agency or a company or whatever you just need to make sure that people understand whatever they're learning even if it doesn't go as planned and all these things because it then helps explain as well decisions further down because if you just take decisions that explaining the learnings it just also doesn't like help people understand it so uh, not for just for yourself but even for others surrounding you it's really important to have this kind of share of experiences and learn and learnings from a project to be able to grow into the next one yeah yeah all right so I really want to be mindful about your time so uh, I would say like what would be your uh, advice for the people who are already um, two years in the SEO industry and they are feeling um, that maybe they didn't deserve like higher position or what would you kind of like advise them and encourage to do? Uh, That's a good question I'd say um I think try to one try to talk to lots of different people that work in the industry because there are lots of people who are really ready to share their experiences and you can actually learn from other people's career without comparing yourself. Just talk about, we talk to them just about how they what they've done and how they've done it. Uh, ask questions, be curious, and um, because this is how you also 
feel like you're learning and once again you know collecting the learnings to be able to grow your confidence um and just you know don't say necessarily don't say no to an opportunity because if especially if someone is offering yeah. it to you but also um if you think that you're ready for it try it and uh, worst case scenario you change what change, what, what what's that bad with this uh we're in an industry where there is a lot of opportunities um and i think there is a there like there are loads of of, of new experiences to have so it's it's now and ever anyway so yeah yeah that's great all right thank you so much laura for today and um yeah i know that we needed to reschedule so for this and kind of like unconvenient time. So thank you so much for being with me here and uh, sharing the your actually your SEO story and your SEO journey. So I definitely am. I know that a lot of people who are going to see like this recording will actually see like oh I was in that situation. I am in that situation now. So they can learn from it so much. So thank you so much for being here one more time and um, yeah see you in the next SEO happy hour thank you so much thank you for your time and for inviting me it was really fun to chat to you actually oh, it was my pleasure have a great weekend